Hello, thank you for watching this plant vodcast on prairie flux, created by University of Minnesota students in Hort 4850, Pollinator Protection in Managed Landscapes. Prairie phlox, or Phlox pelosa, is a beautiful plant with many features attractive to both humans and pollinators. The flower's distinct pink petals and scent are particularly appealing. The shape of the flower helps it serve as a landing pad for insects to comfortably collect nectar and pollinate the plant. The plant grows 6 to 11 inches tall. Prairie phlox leaves are long and slender with a needle-like shape. The flower of prairie phlox has five petals, a tubular floral structure, and although its flowers are typically bright pink, they can be almost entirely white. Prairie phlox does best in full sun and in mesic to dry, well-draining soils. Prairie phlox develops deep fibrous roots, which can make it fairly drought resistant. Many people plant phlox because they like that it attracts beautiful butterflies, doesn't crowd or hinder its neighbor's access to sunlight, and can tolerate underwatering. Generally, phlox is a beginner plant because it's inexpensive and easy to maintain. One way that plants, such as prairie phlox, increase visitation by pollinators is by rewarding those that pollinate it. Prairie phlox does this by providing nectar. A nectary is the part of a plant that provides a mixture of tasty sugars and amino acids called nectar, which attract pollinators. On the phlox plant, Nectaries are found at the base of the petal tube. Only animals with long mouthparts or beaks are able to reach these nectaries and usually contact the pollen-containing anthers to do so. The pollen will stick to whatever is drinking the nectar and be moved to the next flower, pollinating it. Butterflies and moths are the main pollinators of prairie flocks because of the suitability of their long mouthparts for reaching the deep nectaries. Some long-tongued bee species, like bumblebees and even hummingbirds, will visit prairie flocks for its nectar. Short-tongued species, like this green sweat bee and this small bee mimic fly, cannot reach the nectar in the flower's nectaries, but will still visit the blooms and feed on the pollen. One of the pollinators most dependent on prairie flocks is the beautiful prairie phlox moth, Shinia indiana. Listed as a species of special concern in Minnesota and a state endangered species in Michigan and Wisconsin, the prairie phlox moth's entire life history is centered around the prairie phlox. Adult prairie phlox moths are pink and purple to camouflage with the pink blooms of prairie phlox. Phlox moth eggs are laid on phlox plant and larvae feed solely on the phlox leaves and petals. Adult phlox moths exclusively feed on the nectar of prairie phlox. As you have probably realized by now, prairie phlox is an important species. Another positive attribute of prairie phlox is that it is a native species. Native species are important because they are a living testament to the land's history, well adapted to the area, and have a niche in the ecosystem. In the case of the prairie phlox, all three of these characteristics make it a great species to plant. To incorporate prairie phlox into the landscape, however, we must know how it lives in the wild. Phlox species exist mostly in North America, where they grow on the eastern half of the continent. Phlox is found in a wide range of climates, including alpine tundra, woodlands, but are mostly found in tall grass prairie. In Minnesota, the tall grass prairie habitats of phlox is solely decreasing. This is mostly due to conversion from prairie to row crop agriculture. Tall grass prairie is one of the most endangered ecosystems globally, with only about 1% remaining. With much of its native habitat gone, prairie phlox and the animals that depend on it, such as phlox moth, have largely disappeared from most of their range. This being said, prairie phlox makes a great addition to your flower garden. Some other great tall grass prairie companion species to be planted with prairie phlox are butterfly weed and spider wart. Like prairie phlox, both species prefer full sun and well-draining soils. For a truly great pollinator-friendly garden, you will want to plant species of nectar plants blooming all season. Blazing stars can be a great companion plant to prairie phlox. Blazing star grows in the same conditions as prairie phlox, as it does best in full sun with mesic to dry well-draining soils. It is also not overly competitive in most flower beds and blooms later in the season than prairie phlox, 
so you will have nectar sources for pollinators all summer long. By planting prairie phlox, you not only introduce a beautiful pink element to your home garden, but provide beneficial resources to many important and imperiled pollinators. Again, we want to thank you for taking the time to learn about this beautiful flower and a way that you can protect the pollinators that we need and love.